This is from the roof inspection from Kirkland Michael. Maybe some price they have been, so at least that's a good deal because the state's trying to raise them. Well, no, they're not trying to raise them, they're trying to raise the amount of work they have to do. Uh, so it's, uh, most of it's. Are they the same copies? Yeah, they one copy of me for, uh, for us and one for them. Eleven thousand three eighty eight. Three and four bridges. And they do that every year? It's a buy it every other year. Every other year. And it's not like it's something we can get out of our no. <laughs> And it's been back to such huge bridges. Mm -hmm. Got such huge amounts of water that go under those bridges. <laughs> and they also did do the work for a permit we're going to build a bridge over here on the main stall. Typically, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but, but I figured where the word that Dennis called and where I'm jumping to Chini and yeah. Chini is part of Wichita's water, water part that uh, we better make sure we cross T's and I's. And, you know, <laughs> that's quite a few bridges. That's yeah. I didn't realize we had that many bridges. Yeah, that's that's just structures over uh -huh. We have about, yeah. we have more than that under 20 feet is boxed. Yeah. There's 100, yeah. I think you're about 160. I'll make the motion we enter an agreement with Kirk and Michael for the uh, bridge inspection of 104 bridges at a total price of $11,388. dollars i second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the contract with Cook and Michaels to inspect the 104 bridges for a total of $11,388. All in favor say aye. 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 About that dying steel. I've been looking around on the internet. I can't find any anything. Do you have anything else? Man, I don't know. So that's the only one I've been able to find. Yeah. And the only good thing about this is, it, is we could use it on another thing. I mean, if we want to, because it's, I mean, I really think it would help. Yeah, I've seen a lot of talking to you guys to see. Because you guys What's take the state use? They, they go along and put dots along the I don't the know center. exactly what they do. Because man, I tell you what, they truck along. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Our deal, I mean, unless the, you would have to set, you know, where you're, you're going to start and where you're going to end, and they would draw a straight line between the two. Mm -hmm. But you're probably looking at. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and, and that's There's okay. A two in front of the first two. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. The trouble of vision, you have to do that every mile you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, because yeah, not every mile square. And then you got yeah, and well, and then not every road straight. straight. Even. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You yeah. have to figure out where you're. Because it, 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 it would go be like straight in. between those points, and you mm -hmm. can you can tell it how far off that first line you wanted your white lines too. Oh, yeah. I mean, that would be the neat part because that way it would oh, be. Oh, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah your lane width would be exactly that wide. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll go ahead and try to find some more information yeah. out. Uh, I'd tell you one to talk to about that would be Isaac Spare. Isaac, okay. At BTI. Okay. Just to see, because they make, I mean, there's not just the John Deere system, I mean, there's other. You might know somebody that knows somebody. Yeah, because I, I don't think a GPS system would ever probably be feasible for that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to have to be some sort of visual guidance system. Right. They, some of them do have a camera used, but I don't think a camera would really help you. Yeah. I think it's got to be something. This is actually a green laser that points out there. Yeah. So. Okay. Do you just drive by the laser then, or is it guided? No, and you just drive by it. I mean, it shoots, yeah. it shoots it's out there. Point of where you're going to it's, right now we've got a wheel yeah. that sticks out there in front of the visor. 
And out the window to see it. Yeah, just a light bar would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Drive by. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Yeah, that's what I would. I'd talk to Isaac to see if he could point okay. you in the right direction. Yeah. And easy liner makes one that I don't know if it's just on the new machine. That's uh, what we're going to want to talk to. I did talk to John the other day about who was talking about the intersection. Mm -hmm. a um, he says, you know, if we're not if we're not getting very good progress through this, he said at some point one of you guys might want to invite the secretary down because of the freight deal the secretary you know, was pushing so hard for and act like you. <laughs> not not to step on toes or in running around these guys, because maybe maybe some things are getting done, the upper channels and he just doesn't know what and I'm, I don't want to start going above him and stepping on his and making him. There's no sense making an enemy out of him. No, no. So, and then, you know, if, if something nobody had done by the end of September, maybe that's something that we ought to pursue. He, he said we ought to talk to him. Invite like the Secretary, Secretary King, Transportation Secretary, out to look at that. So, hey, this is kind of a vital deal because it's similar. Because that's the only way anything goes in and out of it is by freight. Yeah. And then there was a deal in the Hutch paper where they uh, released bids. I guess they're going to do a major renovation of uh, Highway 50. This is something about between here and uh, Stafford, between Stafford and Kinsley, and then major improvements wet, uh, east of Hutch to. Thank you for it. Yeah, they're going, to, they're, they're going to add several passing lines. They're going to add several passing lines. They're going to do a heavy rehab right, right through the next bit. Yeah. Now, other than that, I don't know anything they're doing on Highway 50 in our county, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening. Yeah, I, did, I, I, I went through the deal and looked, and I didn't see anything. I just, I just knew that heavy rehab was going to go on over here in Maxville, so I don't know if they're going to exactly what they're going to do. Well, they just overlay it? Two and a half million dollars. The heavy rehab, they're going in and doing some base work. Uh oh. So I don't know exactly what, what they are doing until we're talking. And, I right. and that's, is that next year? Yeah, I think that's next year. Because next year is this, 281 to K-19, and then K-19 across. But these two are both like preservation. Uh, there may be a little bit of, a little bit of milling in there. So a, lot, a real light, a light overlay on it, or thin overlay. Yeah, it'd be nice to see some shoulders on that. Yeah, I don't know if we're ever going to see it. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they'll be at, uh, does KDOT usually come to KAC? Um, Ron usually does. And sometimes they invite the secretary to come and talk. He's come and talked to our group before, and you know, sometimes you know, I think he talks to to different breakout sessions with that kind of case. Yeah, after harvest, they could get time then. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty bad. <coughs> yeah, or during harvest, to see what you're yeah. Well, there's going to be a lot of a lot of product to go in there. Yeah. I might have. Next day, something too when he's up there. Well, it doesn't hurt. No. And who knows? It might be done by next spring. Well, I mean, and that's, and, that, and that's what we were talking about. Is yeah. you know, we we need to start getting this plot along. Mm -hmm. Trouble is, they'll be hauling Milo in there till Christmas time. Or Christmas, yeah. it might be Thanksgiving. <laughs> Man, everything just late, so late this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool summer. It was good for lots of things. Early, early <laughs> harvest wasn't one of them, was it? <laughs>
it was right under the bottom of it. You know what? They use, you know, it's our constituents. Just fix it. Somebody quit tearing up stuff. Yeah, I can find it. Oh, by the way, they're building my dirt shit. You know, the truck's trying to go east a lot of times. So they're the whole property. Too far away. Got that in the evening. And that'd be your attention to the truck. Especially loading the. You ever watch a truck turn and then the oh, way yeah. the tires and stuff are when they turn? It's Let's turn out. Yeah. You guys have anything? I don't help. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'll give this back to you. Oh. That's fine. Have a beachy day. <laughs> Lisa, you get anything? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Carolyn's not here yet. Carolyn's coming? Mm hmm. He's sitting over here. Yeah, you want to. Just a few minutes. You don't want to rub off. Yeah, right. <laughs> what he told me yesterday. Okay, that's good. Allergies. All right. I got my quarterly for end of June for second quarter. Balance as of June 30th, eight million eight hundred forty-nine thousand. Got your breakout of your CDs and our liquid accounts. And then there's my graph, my pie chart. You guys know the drill. What's the CDs <laughs> make? Some of that last day. What do they make? Yeah. They're, They're making percent. anywhere from a half percent to only one percent. My savings accounts are almost <clears throat> just as much sometimes. Yeah. Okay, and then um, that's our interest earnings as of. June thirtieth, six thousand four hundred and twenty-three dollars. <coughs> Compared to what it was seven years ago. Yeah, we were we were really shooting that we get we would earn twenty thousand last year, but see we didn't even make that last year. So it's just really keeps tapering off. So that's all I have on that. And then, um, in 2009, we did a resolution for, um, it's a refund policy, like if somebody overpays by, let's see, in 2009, we set it at if they pay it, and it's not less than, it's less than $10, we don't refund it. And if it's over $10, we do refund it, but we charge them $5 <coughs> for the Nina's time to cut a check and all of that. Um, I was kind of thinking, since that was in 2009, maybe we ought to rethink that. Um, talked with Nita and Luann. We thought about raising that up to $20. Not doing a refund if it's $20 or less. And then raise the fee. If we do a refund, charge them $10 instead of $5. You know, guys, refund it, is it just a credit till next year or what is No, it goes into county general. Okay. That's where it goes. That overreach. So wanted your guys' opinion on that, what do you think? So why why would they overpay? Oh a lot of times people like paying taxes if it's three hundred and dollars and forty nine cents, they'll just write it for $301, I'll round it up. Well, I gotta put that money somewhere. Yeah. So I put it in overage. Or sometimes people accidentally just write their check for the wrong amount. Yeah. Lillian has that a lot over here with five really? feet. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's nothing on our part that no. it creates. No. Them. It's it's, it's just, just people sending the check mm -hmm. just for some reason it may not be correct. Or maybe if they're sold piece of ground that was prorated, they might have already wrote the check and you refund that back, right? If it was prorated up to the new We don't prorate. Um, that's usually done in a closing. Okay. 
you don't, you would some money back on that. No. no. So anyway, we kind of thought with the changes with the register of deeds and her fee structure, she's probably going to have a lot more of that where checks aren't really for the correct amount. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there and see what you guys think. Think about it? Yeah. yeah, let's think about it. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Carol? Mm -hmm. Switzerland, oh, okay. and uh, he has been interested in politics and, and government, so I invited him to observe a grassroots <laughs> politics <laughs> at his best. <laughs> at his finest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I wanted to maybe get a little more um, resolution or on um, how we're going about setting up the uh, court and how we're contracting for legal services. I have this um, letter of engagement, I guess it is, that was offered some time ago. I don't know if you all have seen this or not. I know that's where the, the number came from that you used when you were budgeting. So knowing that we've got a court meeting coming up here in September with the intent of, you know, starting the process of getting some of these legal documents drawn up. Um, I'm not sure if it's really the commission that will contract or if it will be the court. The court doesn't have any money, of course, to pay this yet. One of the options that Nina and I talked through yesterday that she, I think, was going to talk with the auditors about making sure that we could do this is that the court can actually maybe um, do make the agreement that the bill may be covered by the county commission. Thank you, Doug. That wouldn't be until 15, so, right? Right. The county commission board would not sign this agreement for attorney services for the port authority, right? Well, we, what? we have a port authority which exists now as a legal entity. So they need to sign their yeah. own contract, but we can pay the bill up until... Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll bring this to the September 18th meeting, and um, at that point, a decision, I guess, can be made on representation. Is that... Yeah. Have you talked to him recently? Not recently. Well, okay. I've talked to him since he came in that June. I think it was our June board meeting. Um, and we've talked at a time or two since then, but not not a lot. Um, well, I noticed it's been February. It's February. <laughs> <laughs> right. <I know. laughs> Maybe it's gotten cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it has. But when he was there in June, he used the same estimates. <laughs> yeah. I, that's how long ago it's been that we first started talking about what would be involved. And Why don't you talk to him and get him for a meeting? Do you want me to have him write a new letter and leave it to the I will, I will specific, specific to the board? I will have you. Those guys see February 14th on there, though, probably. I mean, rather specific to the board. I'll, I'll do that. I'll have right. him offer a letter of engagement. We might right. see what that entails. I mean, what, you know, if that is constructing the bylaws and stuff like that, too, that, that way we wouldn't have to. Oh, I think it is. Does it like, say that in there? No. It just basically says uh, what the hourly rates would be. I'll have them spell it out. Yeah. But. Yeah, I don't really say. Working on this matter. Consultation on Port Authority. Okay, I'll spell it out. But that was the knee-jerk we 
so basically it would not exceed ten thousand dollars. And if we begin this process prior to 2015, so I'm so we're clear on how that can be handled. We have money in the legal services and county general, but it's not been earmarked for this. For that. So or I can ask him that we can carry the <laughs> January. <laughs> Well, you might just tell us. We don't have anything budgeted in 14. Okay. So. Until 15. Okay. Well, we'll work with it. I'm sure it's not the first time they've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's all I have. Did you hear anything, Joe, from Richard? Yeah, I heard back of the like, bylaws request. We got one in with. Pittsburgh and one of the County having a heck of a time tracking down that whole Cimarron, whatever. It's like no county court seems to have heard of them. Oh, I have. <laughs> well, in fact, we use we, we use one. resolutions okay. at the county level from Morton County, ah. and I know Morton in particular. So, so, so I need to go further it. west. See, I, I'm thinking Cimarron. I'm thinking oh, well, six different counties. Yeah. Gray County. Gray is one of them. Yeah. What was that one of your sites to go to Ulysses? Right? Uh, what was that one in Lincoln? Yeah. Have you ever figured that out? That's not, can't be a port. No, it's, I think it's an airport. It uh, sounds right to me. Lincoln County is very finite. <laughs> There's just yeah. not a whole lot of people in the courthouse. I'm sure you would have heard about that one if there was anything there. I wonder what the difference between an actual airport authority and a port authority I don't think there's much difference. Well, uh, I, I, I have to look at the statutes and kind of go down the list. I, I was amazed at how much a port authority can do. For example, yeah. they're not subject to the cash basis law. They can uh, borrow money. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, I have to look at airport authority and see if they have that money. God knows we're doing something up in Ellsworth at that airport, but I'm not involved in it. I just, you know, Explain to folks that you know under 300 feet, it's yours. You know, <laughs> you know above 300 feet, it's the FAA. But if they want to have a an navigation easement coming in over your 300 feet, they need to pay you for your airspace. So I caused a little trouble there, but I encountered that out in Meade when they put the airport in. We got to condemn. Airspace. You can remove a silo. Of course, there's an old abandoned silo, but there's a pricey silo. <laughs> 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 so I think they're going to charge us by the mouse. <laughs> yeah. What day did we have that meeting? I have been down for September 18th. Thursday. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You can say it gets way more exciting later. He's <laughs> 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 like, ah. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> just, are you staying with Carolyn? It's the most exciting. <laughs> immigration. Carolyn is doing some immigration. So, uh, some people will come in the country. No. <laughs> <laughs> After a big discussion. So, so what language do you speak back home? Romance, Italian, German? Italian, German. French. <laughs> Romance, no. Only a few people can speak to So where in Switzerland is your home? In the southern part, the uh, Italian speaking part. Okay. Vicino, the state, close to it. So how long are you going to be here? Until uh, September 8th. Just a couple of weeks. He's yeah. been here through the summer, staying with different families um, through the IFI 4-H program. And uh, it's generally about three weeks at each family. We're at the end and it's a little more curtailed.
Well, it's too bad you can't stay during harvest. Hey, it was here uh, for wheat yeah. harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Then driving tractor. On the first night, he ends up breaking hay through the night. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a good job. That's good. Good. I'm glad to have it. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck with your job. No, thank, thank you. We need it.
Um, and the final thing on the, the year end outcomes report is our, uh, our uh, success rate, I guess you'd call it. Um, so down at the bottom here, this briefing sheet, the, the state sets out a targeted success rate of 75%, which success is just those that do not enter the prison system, um, which can be kind of skewed because some people will be sent to jail and serve out a month and then the judge will turn them unsuccessfully. So it can be a little bit skewed when they say success, but for the most part, that's 75% that don't enter prison is what they hope for. Um, so you'll see there at the year end, uh, we had uh, 110 discharges in fiscal year 14. 24 of those offenders, or 22%, were revoked and entered the Kansas prison system, while 86 offenders, or 78%, did not enter the Kansas prison system. So we ended up with a 78% success rate over those that didn't enter prison. So that was good and our goal, and hopefully uh, maintain that. So, so for this, uh, I was asking for a motion to approve the fiscal year 2014 year end outcomes report uh, for Central Kansas Community Corrections and to authorize the chair to sign the grant forms as needed. And I guess before that, too, I'd try to answer any questions anybody has. Okay, and then the next thing I have here is the uh, uh, 2014 carryover reimbursement budget. And it's kind of the same set of the briefing sheet on top and then the actual report underneath. Um, uh, so what this is, is the, the uh, community corrections submits their comprehensive plan each year, like I was saying. Um, and the KDOC requires a budget submission of local program funding collected by community corrections agencies from program fees and reimbursements. A lot of what that is is uh, drug testing reimbursement, the UAVs that they have. Uh, so community corrections will seek the approval of the budget from the county commission's advisory board and Kansas Department of Corrections. So in fiscal year 2014, the agency collected uh, a little over 22000 and had a positive balance from the previous cash balance of 71000 some change. Uh, so therefore, in the fiscal year 2014, carryover reimbursement budget is $93,249.16. Uh, this budget provides the plan to utilize the agency's offender reimbursements to fund potential separation fees. Um, and it, I think the big one, that Amy being there the most time, if she were to leave or something, that way all the separation fees don't really devastate the budget. Um, it also uh, helps with uh, travel and training expenses. Um, drug testing services, equipment and supplies and vouchers for behavioral health as well as surveillance positions. And the behavioral health, uh, this year we're planning on doing, we're still trying to work out the kinks of the application process, but what it is is uh, uh, the people that kind of fall through the cracks with the mental health treatment, if they don't have the insurance um, and they're, you know, even with the sliding scale, it's still more money than they can afford for their prescriptions and stuff like that. We're working on some sort of application process uh, to get them to we could use this money and either give it to them for that purpose or maybe depending on their income have them reimburse us, put it on their kind on their tab or whatever and they can reimburse us. But at least that way hopefully these people aren't falling through the cracks, especially with all the confusion with Obamacare. It seems like it's been a lot of people slipping through the cracks right now. So um, and then also the surveillance position. 
Um, I think she's still trying to work out the kinks on that too, but hoping to get uh, a surveillance officer, start doing some home checks at night and stuff like that. Uh, probably be pretty rough at first, probably catch some violations, but at least the word we get out that we're out after hours and uh, hopefully increase compliance and increase success. So, um, Pretty much it on that. Well, if anybody has any questions, we would be happy to try to answer the questions attached there. If there aren't any questions, uh, I guess we'd ask that uh, there be a motion to approve the fiscal year 2015 carryover reimbursement budget in the amount of $93,249.16 and to authorize the chair to sign the grant forms as needed. Okay, we'll make the motion we move to approve the fiscal year 2015 carryover reimbursement budget in the amount of $93,249.16 and authorize the chair to sign the grant form. Second that. This is 2015, yeah, because this is what we carry over into this next fiscal year, the budget for it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the fiscal year 2015 carryover reimbursement budget and to authorize me to sign the grant for $93,249.16. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Yeah, I think there must have been a typing error. Yeah, how was that about that? <laughs> Amy, is, Amy says these are the easy ones because we're not asking for any money. Well, there's a carryover from 14, though. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's why I wondered if we worded that correctly. Yeah, yeah I guess. You're carrying it over. You're carrying it into 15 on the budget of 14. Uh, yeah, and it's yeah. a carryover. It's a carryover from 14. Budget. So it's actually right at the top, and then it changes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Say that's fiscal year 2014 carryover. Yeah, I think we might have done this a little more smoothly. <laughs> a little nervous, so probably a little choppy there, but thank you. Uh, any, I think that's all I had. Any questions or anything I can answer? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Well, and you guys, we'll, we'll, we'll try. <laughs> uh, you guys can keep those if you want, or if you guys don't need them, I'll just take them back and recycle you them next time. You can recycle. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Okay. Thanks. Grant one that we thought we'd lost, and I said we'd received it, but it was until the federal released the money. Well, the federal has just released the money. Look at there's a, I just got this, as a matter of fact, Misty just brought it to me. Stafford County, I will be, we will be receiving $9,979. That's the award letter. When I filed this, we were so close to the deadline, when they helped me get through it, they told me to go ahead and send it, and then it got passed to get the commissioner's signatures later. So that's what I'm also needing. First top two lines here. That's good to accept that, yeah. Good luck there. <laughs> uh, remember, if I, I told you guys the kicker on this was when I applied for the grant, you know, you're allowed to put wages in. So what I did is I put my wages in. Then come to find out my wages can't be paid by the grant because I'm already a sworn public safety official. But I told Brett the other day when he called that, you know, you guys have made that also responsibility of Davids. He said, pay his wages for the rest of the year so we can use the grant up. Because okay. this deal's so weird, this grant took effect January 1st, 2014, and ends December 31st, 2014. So we have to spend the money by then. So he said, use it to pay Davids' wages. But I figured once we get the money from the state deposited, then we can 
maybe pay his wages for the rest of the year or it doesn't come out of the EMS somehow. Um, yeah, you have to get close. Yeah. We'll just have to wait until we get the award deals. So. That way we can use money because otherwise we're going to lose it. So, kind of crazy. So, is this money. emergency preparedness money? Emergency management performance grant is what it's called. Well, what fund do I put this in here and give it? We've gotten this before, we'll have to look. Yeah, yeah she gave me a report. You guys received it before. We just received more this year than we had before. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to. Because I think last year on that report you gave me 7,000 something. Yeah, I don't know. All right. A lot of fun reading that, Kurt. Yeah. I'm sure I'm going to sit and read that. <laughs> you got to see the book that goes with it tells you how you can spend it. Yes. Yes. To sign for it. Yeah, to sign for it. <coughs> I'd make a motion to allow the chairman to sign the emergency management performance, performance grant. <coughs> I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to allow the chairman to sign the emergency 2014 emergency management performance grant. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. I signed it. Yep, you did. You already had that. <laughs> all right. Can I get you copies of all these after I make copies of everything? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll get you. I'll make you a copy. One other thing I was going to tell you is the week of September 10th through the 12th, I'll be at the Kansas Emergency Management Association Conference in Junction City. So maybe I'll come back with even more knowledge and what else I can get money for. You know, there's a lot of money on there, but it's stuff Stafford County doesn't need. Has no use for it. So, you know, just, you'd like to apply for some, because some of them have big money on To buy big toys. <laughs> yeah. It's just amazing some of the money that you get away from. Well, that's all I need. Well, enjoy your day off. <laughs> yeah. Go back to work now. <laughs> Thanks. Do you want to do Thank you. Thank you. Well, program. I think what she does is she makes the layer and then she sends it to them and then they put the layer they post on, it them, on the web. I think. But we're going to continually be doing that for, for everybody. Every time they want I thought it. that wouldn't be an ongoing process, oh. but we're going to have to decide how how would we charge. I mean, I think this spectrometry deal is a very needed thing for, for at least Carl's office until we figure out how, we're, how, how everybody can because the, the other day at the meeting, I was completely blindsided when the mayor of St. John asked about uh, about that, and I, I just Good thought that, that, that the city would use use it for whatever they wanted to use it for. We need each department here would use it for, more. and that's the case. But it all has to go through the the appraiser's office, and I think that's just going to be a nightmare, a workload that I don't know we're capable of doing. I think you better. Put Carl on the agenda for next week if he could be here. Because I think there's a lot going on there. Carl looked us up. I saw him today at the courthouse in Ellsworth at 6 15 a.m. He's made here at Hollywood. What? Doing that. 17% at Hollywood. Oh. He'll be back here tomorrow morning. And then one that, and then if we do do that, how are we going to charge for that? 
because if it's going to be something that funnels through that office solely, then I think the county should probably be the sole owner of, it, of paying for the expenses and, and then charge the cities appropriately for what they how they need, need us to use it. So in the city's expense wouldn't be just limited to what the initial cost right. was. They need to understand that. We need well, to or even if it would, that. that would even be part of that. I think there's different ways you could. I just don't know enough about it to figure that out, I guess. I think that's something Carl has to. So you're also going to have to deal with requests from private individuals. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, well, I think for whatever just, reason. It sounds to me like it's become, becoming to be a, a full time job. <laughs> I think potentially. Because that's what's happening with some of the counties that have the GIS system. They have a, they have a GIS, GIS person. Yeah. And in yeah. fact, it's gotten to where, I mean, there's degrees offered now. Right. And even associate degrees, I think, boy, has a, has a program that the so student can go through and become GIS certified. This whole thing just sounds... Well, then I, it seemed like I, I heard a little resistance on some that, well, who who's going to take the time to go and, say, map out manhole covers? Right. I mean, a lot of that stuff's going to be done manually, manually before it's put into the system. Yeah. And the utility, you know, I, I see a lot of advantages for it. Yeah. EMS, fire, city, utilities. That's the very one of the manhole covers. No. <laughs> well, I mean, his, his example. Yeah. But, I mean. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm just updating you on my books here that I'm going, that I'm leasing for three years with Off and Divide. Um, it's coming today. We're going to install it right after you guys get out of here, I believe. <laughs> and when I say install, it just has to be networked. And I have a cable in my office that's long enough. We're going to put it, run it into here, put it on the rolling cart, and then I'm going to train on it in here this afternoon. And then when we use it, we're going to roll it around to wherever we need it. Basically, it's going to be probably in here on days that you're not here, if that's all right. Because it's close to my office, it's I can open the door and see if I need to. Just get so you in. don't sit in my chair. <laughs> oh, I won't. No, we'll probably be standing actually. <laughs> and if people sit in their chairs. Okay. Just well, my people you. generally don't sit in their no, chairs. Some, some do. Some I do. I know. Well, some are long legged, some are short. I'll start putting the signs up. sits down and hits the bottom of his chair, he gets really mad. I'll start putting the signs up and not sit. Put yellow tape across. <laughs> That's a good idea. Get some yellow tape from. Sure. Anyway, the scanner's going to be really awesome. I hope you guys are as excited as me. Probably not, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it color? Yeah. It's color. I'm excited. Um, it really will. I mean, it, it'll be. We'll be able to scan anything. Her old assessment records. Her I am actually thinking about you know since my downtime this summer and I have a lot of downtime. I'm actually thinking about pulling tax rolls out of the salt mines and the you know. It would save a lot of money yeah. on so that. It would be a project for many years, yeah. but I mean, why not start building towards it? I have no intention of scanning the census record for the record. Well, it, it would save the county money if I would scan them. Because yeah. yep. they're moldy and they're fancy. But then you wouldn't have to go down and get them when you have genealogy research. Yeah. I don't have time. You guys got stuff over in Hutchinson? Well, there's like four million of them in the basement. Old tax rolls. I can't get rid of them. Well, anyway, they're like 10 times. There are a lot of little bitty books. They're about this end, and they tell me if I can get them in there. Grandpa had a, how many cows he had, and a chicken, and a mule. He had a gold watch. Yeah, some of those salt mines. They actually are. One of the salt mines. So, anyway, that's what's going on. I'll be using it in here if that's okay most of the time, but it will be on a rolling cart. Uh, no, the cord's going to come. I have a yellow cord that'll 
It's I mean, what, what happens when you go to, say, her office? Oh, she'll, she's not networking. Oh. I mean, oh, it's just networked network. into the server. Oh, okay. Yeah. Plug it in. Right. So I was going to wire this room, but instead I just had Randy ran a longer cable so that we can do it in here and there's an outlet to plug, plug it in. So. That's, that's the card you're going to put it on? Well, that's what I'm going to hopefully put it on today for now. And then when I see it and get so some better it. idea of what I need, then I'm going to get order find another card that is a little more suitable. Yeah, yeah, that's just temporary. Unless you want me to put it on here and just leave it here? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, and sometime after next week or so when we get going on it, come in and... Take a look at it. Okay. Can you show us things? Well, hopefully. Beth's on vacation. I'm training on it today. I don't know when we'll actually get started because I'll have to train her, but you know, in a couple weeks we will. Okay. So, that's the deal. Right. Thank Thanks. Anybody got anything else? Okay. I have one reason I came here was the impound, but apparently we're not discussing no. that. Jeff called yesterday. <laughs> See, I'm, I've always been a you know, big fan of if we could find some private guy to do the towing and storage, you know, less less work for us and less risk for us. Because anytime you tow a vehicle, you're kind of like obliged to provide a certain degree of care or security for it. And in, in, in smaller areas, it's you usually find a tow truck operator, the guy who's actually doing the towing. You know, and anytime he puts a hook to the vehicle at the request of law enforcement by statute, he, he has a lien on that vehicle. So mm -hmm. guys like that. I say guys because I've yet to meet a female too. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, in Ellsworth, we got four people doing that. Of course, they're just you know, working the interstate. So can you have an auction? Well, if or you, should it be if, a sealed if, bid? If, if you're using a private operator, you don't have to worry about selling the damn vehicles. No, I mean, what we right got now. now. Well, right now, what we've been doing is just, uh, you know, publishing. A few times we've had a sale, I think we just published it in the local, or the official newspaper. And, you know, after we sent a letter, certified letter, to the last address or record from the title owner. I don't think it's particularly profitable service for what we're, we're, we're doing. I mean, we're just trying to just that one make that. space. And that one Ford pickup that was purchased, someone in Nebraska bought. Oh, yeah, he quite a bit for that. Point, like seven grand. Really? Yeah. yeah. But the rest of them were. Yeah, the last time we did it, I don't remember how many vehicles we had. There's a lot of vehicles down there. We had sealed bids and you guys opened all of them before I had that spreadsheet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Uh. But. The sealed bid would probably be the easiest. Or not. Oh yeah. Yeah, unless you want to stand there and you know, right. conduct an auction. And then you got to worry about the people who bid but don't have money in their pocket. But Jeff needs to send those letters out first? Yeah, to the, okay. you know, the, the last, you know, you run the VIN number and see who the last registered owner, that's where you send it. Send it certified so you got proof that you, you tried. You tried. Okay. So on the tax sale, mm -hmm. is there any way if, say for example, there was a there was a house that's up for tax sale. Is there any way of inspecting that house or going in? I'd say no because it's not ours until the court, you know, gives us a judgment of foreclosure. It's kind of like you're buying, you know, caveat emptor, buyer beware. Mm -hmm. That question came up the other day. Usually, I try to tell people there are there, there, there are no secret treasures 
uh, in tax sales here. There's a reason why the property is tax delinquent. When was that sort of observation? You said that. I won't be here Thursday to go to you. You're not? Yeah. Is that what you want? September 8th at 7. September 8th. September 8th. Anything else? I don't have that. Okay, we'll adjourn.